Hello, and thank you for tuning in to my talk on the wildlife at Zambia's South Luangwa National Park. My name is Paul Stanbury, and I work for the wildlife tour operator Nature Trek, and I look after uh, most of our sub Saharan African um, safaris and other holidays. Over the next uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to chat through some of the wildlife and scenic highlights of Zambia, and in particular, the uh, it's South Luangwa uh, National Park. So Zambia is um, located in um, southern Africa. Um, it's a landlocked country, um, kidney-shaped in, in, um, in shape, um, sandwiched between Angola, Mozambique, the DRC, and, and Zimbabwe. Um, unfortunately, there are no direct flights into its capital, Lusaka, these days, um, but there are plenty of flights via such places as Dubai with Emirates Airlines, or Johannesburg with British Airways um, and South African Airlines. So the South Luangwa is uh, located in the southeastern corner of, uh, of um, Zambia, accessed from um, Lusaka by a one hour flight to the um, small town of, uh, of Mafui. And the park covers over 9,000 square miles of, of wilderness and is centered along the Luangra River, uh, the only permanent source of water in the, in the whole park. So at the height of the dry season, the dry season runs from roughly July, August through to October, November. Um, the animals are concentrated along the edge of the, of the river and uh, creates one of the most spectacular um, safari experiences um, anywhere on the continent. Some really nice lodges to, um, to, to stay at during your time in the South Luangwa. Um, we've been using Kafunta River Lodge um, for over 20 years for our, for our trips and it's a really lovely small family run uh, lodge. It takes only about 20 people. It's located on the edge of the Luangwa River so fantastic views out over the plains. Uh, excellent food and um, really, really nicely um, set out decor uh, rooms, each of which look out uh, over the over the floodplains of the the Luangwa River. Um, one of the great things about the, uh, the South Luangwa is that the wildlife is all over the place, and even when you're in the lodge, you never quite know what's going to wander through during the middle of the day. Now I'll put this, this um, slide in to illustrate what, you, what you're not going to get in the South Luangwa National Park. You don't get the crowds of vehicles that you get in some of the other reserves in, in Africa. Um, and one of the, the main reasons for this is that the lodges in the park are not big. Most of them only take 15, 20 or so people. So that the, the, the hotel capacity in the park does not lend itself to, to big crowds. So rather than the sight of loads of minibuses crowding around lions, what you're going to get on a safari in the South Luanga is open, totally open vehicles, so fantastic visibility and probably the wildlife um, all to yourself. And Zambia was the place where walking safaris were first pioneered back in the 1950s by the late, uh, late Norman Carr. And it's still the, the focus of, of walking safaris to, to this very day. So if you, if you like to be out on your, on your feet um, rather than cooped up in a safari vehicle, um, Zambia is the place to go. And you can walk from camp to camp looking at the wildlife um, and other, other natural history as you, as you go. Um, and to this day, say so we offer wildlife walking walking safaris in the South Luangwa, as well as the more traditional um, vehicle vehicle based safaris. And you can mix the two. Some of the camps offer both vehicle safaris and um, walking safaris. Um, but whether you're on a walking safari or a vehicle based safari, you're likely to be woken up in the morning by the song of the white browed robin chat, also known as Huglin's robin, a really a, attractive and quite a common bird in the, in the park. If they don't wake you up, then you'll probably be awoken by the shrill call of the, the African fish eagle, which is again another, another common species that you see along all the way along the, the Luangra River. Now game drives tend to be first thing in the morning, so you're up at, uh, at first light or just before first light, you have a cup of coffee, head out in the vehicle at the, um, at the crack of dawn um, when, the, when it's cool and the wildlife is at its most active. 
you return um, mid to late morning for for brunch then a siesta and then out again in the in the afternoon normally about three to four three thirty to four o'clock um, extending which which then extends into into a night drive as well so the hottest part of the day you're typically back at the lodge um, relaxing this is a typical scene in the south Luangwa herds of elephants walking across the, the Luangwa River. Um, elephant are, are very common in the park and, uh, and, and will be seen um, probably on, on every day um, of your visit. There are lots of hippos here as well. The South Luangwa River holds probably one of the densest populations of hippos anywhere in Africa, and especially in the, in the drier months of the year, once the water levels have gone down and the hippos tend to crowd into the deeper pockets of the river and it's quite an impressive um, sight just to watch these amazing animals sparring with each other um, and um, yeah, making quite a ruckus. Buffalo as well, very common, huge herds of buffalo. In the dry season, they gather together in, in massive herds, numbering in their, in their hundreds, sometimes into, into their thousands. They're quite nomadic, so they wander over large areas, but in the drier months, they, when the Luangwa River is the main source of water, you often get great herds of buffalo strung out along the edge. And as well as the, as the, as, as the larger mammals, you have a variety of, of, um, of, of, of antelope. Um, one of the most attractive is the, is the greater kudu, um, which are seen frequently. There are also uh, puku, um, there are lots of impala, um, and plenty of others as well. And where you've got a, such a concentration of, of, of game prey, then you, of course you've got the predators. South Luanga is one of the best parks, really probably anywhere in Africa, uh, to see lions and and leopards um, it doesn't have cheetah so it's the one animal that you won't see in the south of Luangwa is cheetah but there are plenty of lion as I say leopard as well to, to make up for that and leopards it has one of the densest populations of leopards anywhere anywhere in the world um, you may be fortunate to see one um, in a hold up in a tree relaxing in a tree during during the heat of the day but you're probably most likely to see them on the night drives which I'll show you in a bit and wherever you've got the predators, of course, you've got the scavengers. Um, there are plenty of spotted hyenas um, in the park, and these are frequently seen um, scavenging around uh, around lion and leopard kills. Maybe not one of the most attractive of the birds you find in the in the reserve, but, but the uh, marabou stork serves a, a very very important role. Like the hyenas, it's um, the, um, the 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 the, dust, the dustbin men man of the um, of the African plains and will come and scavenge John Kills um, and, and clean up all the mess. Now as the as the dry season progresses and the water levels in the in the river um, subside, um, it exposes large sandy banks along the edge of the Luangra River. Um, and these attract one of the park's most spectacular uh, birds, the southern carmine beezer, which arrive in their thousands between about August to October, um, early November, to nest along the along the sandy river banks. This has to be one of the most spectacular wildlife sites anywhere in Africa. Hundreds of these wonderfully um, brilliantly coloured birds hawking overhead and 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 perched out on the um, on the sandy river bank. But as well as the carmine beaters, there are plenty of other colourful birds to look for. Um, there's the, the white fronted beater, the attractive little malachite kingfisher. Um, so we run tours to the South Luang that focus not just on mammals but um, on birds as well. So if you're particularly keen on birds, then look for the departures that are that are that, that focus on the on the birds. Southern crowned crane is um, also uh, commonly seen, sorry, grey crowned crane um, is, is also commonly seen within the park. Um, blacksmith's plover, um, one, of the, um, one of the more frequently seen, very attractive uh, wading birds, where the, wherever there's any, any wet area, you're likely to see blacksmith's plovers. And during, during our winter months, when um, birds that breed in, in, the, in the UK and Europe and further north migrate down into Africa to spend the winter, you have a chance of seeing um, other species such as this wood sandpiper, but also curlew sandpipers, little stints, marsh sandpipers, and quite a variety of other species that gather along the Luangwa during um, our winter. 
One of the great things about South Luangwa National Park is that you can head out after dark on spotlighting trips. And this opens up a whole new uh, suite of, of, of wildlife to enjoy. And it's the best time to look for cats. They're most active after dark when they're out hunting. And this applies to both the leopards you can see here and, uh, and lion too. And the Tautawangwa is home to a wonderful variety of nocturnal mammals. And I've been fortunate over the years to do some night drives in a, in a variety of African countries, but never seen such a diversity of species as I have in the South Luangwa. So as well as South, Afri South African crested porcupine, which we have here, there are honey badgers, civets and, and, and genets, um, a variety of, of, of mongooses. Um, and um, of course, an, an interesting uh, suite of nocturnal birds to, 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 to look for as well. Um, the giant eagle owl, also known as Vera's eagle owl, um, easily identified by their bright pink eyelids. One step up again is the Pell's fishing owl, which uh, occurs in the park and can be seen from time to time either fishing along the river or at, um, at a couple of ponds next to one of the lodges um, inside, uh, inside the park. A little bit smaller and slightly more difficult to see um, is the African scops owl. Um, amazing camouflage here of this roosting bird uh, up, against a, up against a small tree. Fortunately they quite often roost in exactly the same spot every day so the guides typically know where to find them. Um, and also you should consider traveling to Africa not just in the dry season. Most people tend to go in the dry season when the river levels are low, when the water is at its, at its lowest, so the animals are more concentrated. But the green season, the rainy season, has much to offer as well. Not only is the landscape green and lush and these wonderful um, dark, thundery clouds in the background, the animals um, are well fed, they have their young. And it's also a great time for, for, for the birds too. Um, of course, there are plenty of the animals a little bit more spread out in the green season because there's more food, there's more water for them. But you'll still see plenty of thorny cross giraffes, plenty of, of, of zebra, elephant and the predators too. And this is the time to go, if you're particularly interested in seeing wild dog, um, wild dog sightings have increased in the South Luanga over the past few years and in particular um, in, the, in the green season. So trips that, are, that run in, say, from mid-November through December, January, February, March stands stand you the better chance of, of seeing uh, packs of wild dog. Um, as I mentioned, the birding is also at its best in November once the, uh, in the green season, once the rains have fallen, um, a lot of migrating birds, a lot of winter birds come down to spend the, the winter months in the South Luangwa. These are abdim stalks. It doesn't take long for the grass to grow, for the trees to spring out into leaf, all the insects to come out, and then numerous birds uh, follow in, it, in its wake. There a lot of the birds that in the, in the drier months um, become um, brown and drab like, like little sparrows, molt into a wonderful variety and kaleidoscope of different shapes and colors. This is a shaft-tailed wider. Um, a couple of months earlier, it would have looked like a small little brown stripy sparrow. Um, you also have their cousins, the paradise widers, pintail wider, the, the, the widows and the weaver birds <clears throat> all migrate into this wonderful variety of breeding plumages and you can see them on their on their nesting sites. And of course if you're going all that way to Zambia why not extend your trip? So once you've done your safari there are plenty of other options in Zambia and further afield to enjoy uh, such as the spectacular Victoria Falls. Um, which are only a short flight um, down from, from Lusaka. Um, but there's also um, Kasanka National Park, Kafui National Park, um, even the North Luanga as well, which is a, a wilder and more remote region um, and great to explore. So I will end with a sunset over the Zambezi River and just to say thank you very much for, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, and um, if you have any questions at all on, on, on Zambia or any other of our, of our tours, please do give us a call on 01962 733051 or everything as well is, is, is on our website at www.naturetrek.co.uk. So thank you very much again for, for tuning in. Thank you.